Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, November 27th. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, nice long weekend, so shortened trading week. Uh, but taking a look at the S&P to start with, you can see SPX is hanging out just under all-time highs here. And I expect that whether we get a pullback first or we just smash through it, we are going to be smashing through uh, the all-time highs, so we will see how long that takes, but it uh, looks like pretty much a foregone conclusion. Uh, we've just been on this rampage ever since the election ended, and the news about the vaccines coming out. Uh, it's just been going straight up, chopping around the last couple weeks here, but obviously coming into a holiday week, there's not typically going to be too much action. And so I think it's just up, up, and away. Now we're still a little under one-to-one -one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So we're still going to keep some short delta on uh, in, case we, in case we do see a, a significant rollover to protect ourselves from the downside. But we'll continue to add new positions on, uh, some directional, some, some bullish uh, for the anticipation of some higher prices here. So Let's jump into the alerts, and then I'll talk about our day trading results here in a minute as well. So starting with the alerts, uh, first trade was on Monday in SPX, added an iron duck in SPX. Did this one with just two days to expiration, very short term. You know, had a, had a little bit of a bullish bias, but still gave us a nice downside buffer. Uh, collected a credit of 605 on that, so nice, nice credit with just two days to expiration. I'll get to the closing trade here in a minute. Uh, also had a Tesla iron duck that we closed out, booked uh, basically beak profit on the trade after price ran higher. If we go to a chart of Tesla, I was looking for a, uh, an opportunity to put another one on and just never got what I was looking for. Uh, I was hoping for just a little bit of a pullback, but man, this Tesla has just been on a, on a rampage to the upside after the news of being included in the S&P 500, which, by the way, takes place, I, th I believe it's December 21st, sometime in December. I think 21st is the day. But look at the look at the increase in price and the expansion in implied volatility. So that uh, that bodes well for for putting on ducks because I think the risk in Tesla is definitely to the upside. So we want to not have any risk to the upside, which is perfect for the iron duck. And yet we still have a huge buffer to the downside. So I'd love to see a little pullback uh, uh, in Tesla and, and put on some more ducks, but we'll see what happens. We may throw one on anyway. Um, and so anyway, we had one on and, and with this run up, it just ran up the beak. So we closed that out for beak profit. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we've got this short strangle on in SMH that we've been working. Obviously, SMH has been strong, continues to hit new all-time highs. Uh, so it's hanging out in the upper end of our range here. Uh, so we could use a little bit of a pullback to center uh, to help out with that one. That one's now in January, so we've got lots of time on that now. Next trade was a closing trade in SPX. So this is one of our iron ducks. So we had... Um, uh, we had we had two of them on in the same expiration with that November 25 expiration, uh, and this one we went ahead and closed out right at five bucks. We booked exactly beak profit. Did get a question? Uh, I think it was by email or it may have been in the community about why not let this expire? And you could certainly do that, especially with SPX, and especially if you have Toss as your broker because they don't charge an assignment or exercise fee. In this case, we just wanted to clear it out. Because the very next day, and then we closed that one out, because the very next day we added a new one, and that was just to uh, just to clear it out. So either way is fine, close it out. Uh, and then this one, we did another closing one, which we booked Beak Profit on as well. Um, and we only had this, this was the one we just had on for one day. And so we went ahead and just closed that out and, and booked, the, booked the profits on that one. Uh, rolling adjusting trade in DE. So we've been holding DE as one of our short delta positions. Uh, price is pretty close right where we put it on, right inside range here. So just holding this for some more downside action. Uh, next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added this, uh, another iron duck with 14 days. So let's go ahead and go to the platform. We've got a couple ducks on here. This is the one that expires on 1210. You can see price is hanging out right here. Still a decent chance uh, for it to get back into the duck head if we get a little pullback in price. And then here's our shorter term one, and this one expires on 12.5. Uh, and you can see price is 
far up. We're at basically max on the beak profit at this point. But like I, what I like to do here is I like to set my slice to see right at the duck head as if it, it got right out of the beak. What's our probability of profit? We've got to set our calendar to the expiration date, which in this case is 12.5. So you can see we've, there's about a little less than 20% chance that price can get back there. So if price stays right here or goes higher on Monday, then we'll probably just close this out, book beak profit, because there's very little chance of it getting back to that max profit zone. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and leave that one on. Next trade and final trade was Amazon. So we opened up an iron duck in Amazon. Amazon hasn't been super strong recently, and so uh, it hasn't. It's not extended to the upside like a lot of these symbols. And so uh, it was up a tiny bit today, but implied volatility is decent. We got a decent credit, and just to kind of diversify out of just SPX, uh, we chose Amazon. It's always these ducks work really well well in these high price symbols. Uh, so we put one on in Amazon. Uh, also assuming, you know, as these retail numbers come out from Black Friday, uh, assuming Amazon will benefit from that. So we could see some upside. And if we don't, we've still got this huge buffer to the downside. In fact, that buffer's way down at 3024. So way down here, uh, about right here, is our, is our downside buffer. And this is a 14-day duck. Uh, yeah, expires 12-12. And so we will uh, hold this one. If, obviously, if price runs higher, we'll exit early for a big profit. If not, we'll hold it near close to expiration, and hopefully we can get a little bit of downside action. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. We've got a short delta posi position in ES. Price is just outside the range on that one. Natty Gas was down a little over 3% today, but still well within range. We're up about 460 bucks on that since our last roll. ZB had a nice update today. If we look at a chart of the bonds, uh, you can see it's been kind of just trending down, you know, lower lows, lower highs, just kind of trending down, looking like it may be looking to make a uh, kind of get out of that range and make it bounce. So I'm going to leave this on over the weekend, but we'll probably close this out on Monday if we get just a little bit of a pop higher, get right back to center, and we'll book over $3,000 since our last roll, and we'll be, we'll be profitable on this trade. So We'll probably get out of bonds on Monday, and that'll also coincide with getting closer to that 21 days to expiration next week. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to just close that one out. Uh, Apple, another one of our short delta positions. You can see we're up about 136 on this one since our last roll, just holding this for that short delta, that downside protection. I mentioned Amazon, DE, DIA. Uh, this one's just outside of range too. Just need a little bit of downside to get back in. Same with IWM. This one's a little bit further out of range. We're just holding this for that short delta position. Same with the Qs. Uh, I mentioned SMH, SPX. SPY, we've got our iron condor. Uh, we're up about 170 some dollars since our last, since we put this one on. Uh, I'd like to add another one here, but the implied volatility is just pretty low. IV percentile at 26. Now you're still able to get some decent premium. Implied volatility was just so high for so long with the coronavirus and everything else going on, that even though, remember the percentile ranks uh, what the IV was versus where it's been over the last year. So compared to where it was early this year, it's, it's still, it's pretty low, but we may still sell some premium here because the options are juicy and you can still get a decent credit. Uh, so we may add on another uh, iron condor in SPY. This one's in December, so we may add one in January, especially if our break even uh, if price gets closer to the break even here. And then lastly, XLK. Uh, this is right at the break even, so just holding this for some short delta exposure as well. Uh, again, you know I'd like to add some more positions, just looking for some opportunities, and we'll continue to get a little bit more aggressive adding positions into next week. So look for that. And then last thing I want to mention is just our day trading for the week. Obviously a shortened week here. Uh, we only streamed on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I was able to sneak some trades, some Mighty 90 trades in on Wednesday, book 775 on Wednesday. And then this morning I posted in our Facebook group, just took seven trades. All seven were winners. Uh, volume was light, range was narrow, so I'd stayed super small, and I'm talking just a few hundred dollars in buying power per position, but booked winners on all of those for uh, plus 299. 
So Mighty 90s for the week, uh, almost $2,000. Uh, did 19 trades, winning percentage back above 70% for the third week in a row. Uh, only did one pairs trade, booked 272. That was on Monday in the room. And then runners, uh, again, I didn't take any Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Just did eight of those on uh, Monday and Tuesday for a total of 520. So if we look at our, our summary here, total for the week on a shortened week, $2,778 on 28 trades. And our total profits uh, since the beginning of September, or August 31st was the first day we started tracking here, uh, over $30,000. So pretty, pretty phenomenal. And the biggest thing that I'm lo loving is our Mighty 90 for the third week in a row, over 70% win rate. And that's really where we need to be. So just did a little tweak uh, a few weeks ago after after some uh, analysis of our, of our Mighty 90 and just made a little tweak to the way we were managing it. Uh, back to way it originally was uh, intended to be managed and it's paying off well. Now, not much of a profit a few weeks ago due to a, a big loser in there, but still over 70% win rate. And then last week, 80%, which are really nice with a really nice profit. And then over 73% this week with a really nice profit. So really happy to be back on, you know, just really solid footing, really solid um, uh, win rate and profits on the mighty 90. So now we're uh, up to over 4,200 total since the end of August, 1st of September. So coming up on three months. So a lot of solid, uh, solid performance coming in across the board and we'll continue to build on this. So we'll be, we'll be rolling out the official class for the runners on, uh, in January. And of course I've mentioned a couple times, make sure you mark your calendar if you haven't already. Uh, for the, our next class that we're going to be presenting, not a day trading class, but it's called the Vertigo Strategy, and it's going to be part of our income portfolio uh, arsenal. Uh, so really excited to share that with you. And with that, everybody have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and we will catch you on Monday. We'll be streaming live uh, next week. So make sure you keep your eyes on in the live stream room. We post our calendar there. Uh, and make sure you, you see there are certain days where we don't stream. And so just make sure you keep your eyes on that calendar. All right, everybody have a good weekend. We will catch you Monday.